Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining, and we welcome you to this month's Connect with Controlum session. My name is Taylor, and I am a technical support analyst. Today, we will be discussing the Controlum Enterprise Manager Server 920 upgrade, some new features, and demonstrate the process of the upgrade in a couple different scenarios. Joining us as our panelists for today, allow me to introduce Octavio Vasquez and Arthur Yates. During the course of the presentation, we recommend going to full screen mode by pressing the arrow button in the bottom right hand corner of the player. As well, you should change the quality settings of your monitor to full 1080 resolution, and that will offer the best viewing experience. Please note that this presentation is available via the attachments tab on the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please feel free to post them in the ask question box. We'll be addressing those questions at the end of the session. Here's the agenda for today. Today, we will be covering the following topics. An overview of the upgrade and migration process, some new features in Controlm 920, requirements and considerations to be aware of before your upgrade, a quick summary of the MIGO program, steps that are needed for upgrade with Controlm high availability, a demonstration of the EM server upgrades, recapping what was covered during this presentation, and the question and answer session with our panelists. Once again, please remember that the chat window will be available through the presentation for any questions. Depending on your environment's configuration, there are two ways to move to 920 for your EM server, the in-place upgrade and also migrating to the EM to a new host. For the in-place upgrade, if you are at Controlm Enterprise Manager 9 with at least Fixpack 100, you are able to consider an in-place upgrade to the newer release. And for the migration, starting with Control M920, there are changes to the migration process with the following options available. First option, you can migrate the original Control M version from the source host to the same version of the destination host. Verify the existing version of Control M is migrated successfully on the new destination host. And once migrated over, you can perform an in place upgrade from the original version of Control M to Control M920 on the new destination host. For option two, you can choose to perform an in-place upgrade from the original version of Control-M to Control-M 920 on the source host, and then perform a Control-M 920 migration from the source host to the destination host with 920 installed. For example, if you are at the following versions of Control-M EM server and assuming the current host is compatible with 920, you may upgrade in-place to 920. If you are also considering moving to a new OS on a different host, you can install the current version on the destination host, and once migrated, you can then proceed to upgrade in place to Control M920. Additionally, the source host may be upgraded to 920 to facilitate migration to the 920 host. So, what's new in Control M920? First off, the introduction of a centralized connection profile provides the ability to define connection profiles once on a central location and use it across all available agents. In addition to the ease and simplicity of CCB creation and maintenance, the new centralized connection profiles help with faster disaster recovery and launching new plugins when needed. The information is accessible from a central location and stays available in case of data migration, upgrade, and disaster recovery. You can use Control M Web from your local web browser to manage the day-to-day -day operations for most Control M users, which allows more flexibility in the need to install, maintain the desktop client. Additionally, the following microservices have been added to the EM server. The Control M Web microservice enables the Control M Web to function with its enhanced functionality introduced with 920 and the scheduling service helps distribute requests generated by the view schedule option when checking a job's expected run date. To ensure that you are prepared to plan and perform the upgrade to 920, please ensure you are aware of the following requirements. The minimum system requirements, including CPU, memory, and disk space. That the operating system of the host is compatible with 920, which can be checked on our product's compatibility matrix. For Unix, 
Linux environments, check that the system limits for the user account used to run the upgrade meet or exceed our recommendations, and that you have at least seven gigabytes disk space available to allow the upgrade to run without issue, that the current version has the latest ver uh, fix pack level installed, and if you are upgrading from control M9 or 918, that you are aware of the need to run the em underscore handle underscore duplicate underscore folders utility. And here are some considerations as well. If you are still utilizing Control M reporting facility on EM Server 9, please know that starting with Control M 918, these report templates and any EM report CLI jobs using them need to be manually converted to be used in Control M reports. Also, if you are upgrading in place, you will automatically be using client compatibility mode to allow lower version clients to connect to the upgraded EM server. Please know that any new features will not be activated until compatibility mode is disabled, and once disabled, there is no way to re-enable. Additionally, if you are utilizing a local Postgres database, after the EM server upgrade, you have the option to upgrade the database to a newer version. Another item to consider is the ability to open a case with our support team for a sizing template request. This this allows you to provide specific details that help us better understand the environmental load and suggest recommended hardware specifications in case they exceed our minimum requirement. One resource that can be utilized is our Amigo program that is offered at no additional cost to help you ensure that you have all necessary resources available so that you can begin planning for your upgrade. Please note that this program is offered when moving from a supported version to a newer release. There are two phases of the Amigo process, starter and review. For the starter, which is a high level overview of the upgrade to ensure that you are familiar with the relevant resources, we suggest that starter cases be opened as soon as you would like to start the conversation around your upgrade. For the review, which is a more in-depth conversation that includes a checklist to be handled by the SEV1 or on-call resources from our team, we recommend that the case for this phase be open two to three weeks prior to your planned cutover date. By utilizing both phases of the Amigo program, you will ensure that you have taken full advantage of this offering and are better prepared to complete your upgrade. When working to upgrade the Control M Enterprise Manager servers that are configured with high availability, you need to ensure and be aware of the following. The secondary Control M configuration agent must be down. The Control M EM database must always be up at the time of the installation. The installation must be performed on the primary and then on the secondary. After installing on the primary, you must install on the secondary before starting up the secondary configuration agent. And that high availability is not available until you install on the secondary. During our demonstration, I'll start off by demonstrating how to execute the em underscore handle underscore duplicate underscore folder script in case that this is required for your environment. Next, I will work to go through the process of preparing my primary and secondary em servers for an in-place upgrade to 920. And finally, I will log into a standalone em server to upgrade this host to 920 as well. Let's begin the demonstration. Before we begin the upgrade process, I wanted to demonstrate how to run the EM handle duplicate folder script. By following our online documentation and the reference knowledge article, I've already worked to download the required Python script from our FTP server and extract it into the EM server bin directory. By opening a command prompt from this location and then working to call the Python executable included in the 920 installation media, I am now able to call this script. Once running, please follow the interactive prompt that is displayed. Please note that this is done automatically when upgrading from a version lower than the 919, and depending on the results, running this manually to address any duplicates that are found may be required. As seen here, there are no duplicates found, and the corresponding database update is not needed to be made since I am already at Control and EM 919. Next, we can proceed to prepare for the high availability upgrade. First off, we need to move to the secondary host and stop the Enterprise Manager configuration agent. 
Once this has been stopped, we can go back to our RDP session to the primary and launch the setup executable to begin the upgrade. Once the installer launches, I'll be following the prompts. and choosing the Enterprise Manager upgrade. To save time, we'll cut to the end once this upgrade has completed. Now that the preparation step is completed, we can click to confirm the shutdown of all EM server processes and click to begin the upgrade step. After the primary upgrade has completed, we can then perform the upgrade on the secondary by choosing the same options that were uh, selected during the primary upgrade. Once again, by choosing the same options, Once again, the preparation step has completed, and we can confirm the upgrade step. Once the secondary upgrade has completed successfully, we can work to start the secondary Enterprise Manager configuration agent to ensure that the necessary communication is working between the primary and the secondary, which allows high availability. Now that both have been started, we can go back to the primary and by checking the CCM, we can confirm that the version has been updated in this column and that high availability is now available to be used. Finally, I'm logging into my standalone EM server running on Linux. And we've already worked to extract the install media here. And we can begin running the setup script. Because this is a full installation, I'm given the choice of which component I would like to upgrade. I'm choosing one and then one and then entering again to begin the preparation step. Once again, we're going to cut ahead in time to save uh, Now that the preparation step is completed, we can hit enter to begin the upgrade process. Here we see that the upgrade has completed successfully. Please observe the note that to start working with Control M EM, you must close the current session and open a new one. But now that this is completed, we can check the installed versions.txt and confirm that 920 has been upgraded. This concludes our demonstration, and we will go back to our presentation. One additional item that may apply to your environment is the need to upgrade a standby or disaster recovery EM server host. In a disaster recovery environment, the database in the recovery site is set to read only, which enables replication from the primary site. This procedure allows you to upgrade without changing the read-only status of the database and without interrupting database replication. Please refer to this link of our online documentation for the steps required to utilize this parameter. Let's review some of the topics we've just covered. 
First, we add an overview of the options to upgrade in place or migrate to 920, some of the requirements and considerations you need to ensure readiness for upgrade to 920, the Amigo program that is offered at no additional cost to help you start forming a plan for your upgrade from a supported version, and a demonstration of upgrading a primary and secondary EM server, as well as a standalone EM server. Lastly, here are the, some of the resources previously referenced to ensure that you are prepared for your 920 upgrade. Once again, please know that this presentation may be downloaded for your future reference and to have these links readily available. Thank you for attending this presentation. We hope the information provided proves useful in helping you prepare for the upgrade of your Control M environment. We would like to encourage you to provide your feedback in the webinar in the feedback tab. Please let us know what you thought about the presentation, any topics you want covered in the future, or any comments and suggestions you may have. Also, we will be sending you a survey in the following days, and we would appreciate it if you took a few minutes of your time to fill in your responses and send these in. You may follow us on social media platforms uh, via Facebook and Twitter. Past BMC webinars may be viewed on BMC communities via YouTube and iTunes. Today's webinar will be posted in a couple of days. Now we will proceed with the question and answer section.